Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I want to, I had some troubles with the PCB uh, passing the radiated emissions, and uh, I narrowed down the problem to a clock line with uh, using a, a near field probe. Maybe I should make a video about uh, the whole process. Um, so it's a it's a it's a clock line, 125 megahertz clock line coming from an Ethernet Phi chip going going to a microprocessor. Uh, this PCB track was radiating like hell, so I, it was failing on the third harmonics and the fifth harmonics, and I think on the fourth harmonics as well. So it, it has a lot of harmonics. Now, uh, funny enough, the fundamental frequency was fine, but the harmonics were quite large. Uh, I fixed the problem by changing some values. My the means to fix this they were limited because I couldn't change the PCB. I had to change only some values on the PCB. So I uh, modeled everything in uh, LT Spice and I put together a presentation so I'll sh just show you how I fix it and uh, what was the problem and I hope uh, there is something um, to be learned here. Okay, I tried to model my problem here in uh, LT Spice. You may ask why LT Spice and not using you know hyperlinks or some very fancy tool because I don't have it. Okay, so uh, this is the source, it's a 125 meg clock uh, with a rise and fall time of half a nanosecond, so it's pretty fast, I would say. Maybe I exaggerated a bit here. Um, anyway, this is the first via. So immediately after the IC pin, there is a via. And then on the bottom side of the PCB, there is a series termination resistor here, so you can adjust the impedances. Then it's two inch of PCB track, another via, the track comes on top, another two inch on top, then is a third via going again on the bottom and then another via after a few millimeters, I didn't put anything here in between, uh, which is going on the BGA ball of the microprocessor where this clock signal ends up. So this is the load here. Um, I put a fairly high impedance because the CMOS uh, buffer input and uh, two picofarad of um, let's say um, parasitic uh, on the ball of the BGA. Now along the way I put some five uh, half picofarad capacitors just to otherwise we get a lot of um, high, very high frequency oscillations in the in, in the simulation. So now Along the way, those I modeled the uh, two inch of track by putting a transmission, a delay line, a transmission line. Now I calculated for two inch of PCB what would be the delay. So it's a uh, point one hundred uh, around one hundred and seventy picoseconds or point one seven uh, nanoseconds. Uh, and I put here the impedance of the track. I put eighty. Uh, you may wonder why why eighty. Uh, I measured the width of the track and the distance to the to the reference plane in and i put in an online calculator and it came about 80 ohm so now don't worry about 80 ohm if it's not 50 ohm it's not the end of the world if you match your driver to the to the to this impedance right okay so let's see how it looks like now this is the 22 ohm source uh, value that it was in the schematic originally. I didn't design the PCB uh, and I didn't design the schematic, it was someone else. I had to to <clears throat> go to um, emission testing and the board was failing on, on some harmonics of, of this clock. So, okay, let's see how it looks. So we simulate here and when we launch the clock here after the, let's see how it looks. So you can see it has a lot of ringing um, here the amplitude it's not great it's actually over 3.3 volt let's go along the way so we go along the way bang again a lot of ringing a lot of ringing even higher let's go close to the load let's go to the load just go the load you see on the load it's the ringing is very very high so we are getting, getting close to 4 volts this, those four volt there is going they're going is going to open four volt overshooting is going to open the protection diodes on the on the microprocessor here there are those diodes which they go to the VCC and they come from ground to the pin 
um, which they protect the IO. So definitely this looks bad. So we don't want this. Now, our source here has the impedance, I put the impedance of 30 ohm, which is fairly, it's close to a CMOS driver. So 30 ohm impedance here. We want, we have transmission lines of 80 ohm, so we need to match this to 80 ohm. So 30 of this, we need to put here in series, uh, what, 50 ohm. Actually, this is what I put on the PCB. And now let's simulate and see how it looks. Whoa, that looks way better. So here are the, rec are the receiver. That looks okay. Yeah, overshoot. Yeah, a bit of overshoot, but it doesn't even bite into 3.3. So it's okay. We knew that we are going to lose a little bit of uh, amplitude across this resistor, but that's fine. Let's see how the launching point looks like. Yeah, there is some ringing here. And you see those things, which are kind of normal because of the reflection back and forth. I wouldn't be worried about this uh, stuff here, have very high frequency. Imagine that this this front it's half a nanosecond, so that that is probably in dozens of gigahertz. So I I think it's, it's in reality it's just going to be wiped uh, out by the by the stray capacitors of those tracks. So I don't think it is actually. I think this is just in simulation. So the thing is along the way here things they start to look okay-ish. I would say yeah yeah so. As we travel towards the load, things they start to look better and better. And the reason why this high frequency thing actually disappears here is because of the, the capacitors of the of the load. Okay, so um, what I'm, the conclusion here is that you need to match the, your driver to the impedance of this line. Now I'm not sure if I model this very very accurate but I did my best what I can tell that I couldn't see those signals I kind of saw this like this but not with this resolution why because my scope doesn't have the bandwidth to show those signals like the simulation but they were not far away from uh, from reality what I measured so um, anyway if, uh, we Putting the 50 ohm here instead of 22 ohm, it uh, it, it it fixed the, the emission problem. Now, what you should do, other than so, other than just matching this with a series resistor, I have here another. Uh, see how I scroll to this. I have here what you should actually do <laughs> in the first place. So you go from the IC. You have a series termination and then you have a continuous track. You don't have vias. You don't have all this, all those vias, which they have their own parasitics. Just a straight track, which goes on the same layer on top. You start on top, you go on top. Or you start on the bottom, you go on the bottom. No vias in between, no parasitic inductance of the vias, right? So let's see how this looks against this. So if I, so first this is this and this is that. Well, this looks way cleaner. You see, it doesn't have all that rubbish. Same here. Yeah, you have this reflection. This is because it's going back and forth and it's coming a few times over this transmission line. Uh, I wouldn't be very worried about this uh, because this, this this effect kind of fades away across the transmission line. Now I, I can't model here and move the probe uh, across the transmission line. But you, you, you do realize if it's like this at the here, uh, and like this here, it will be something in between in the middle of the line. So yeah, I think it looks good. Uh, this is how it's supposed to be done on the PCB. Now I can't change the PCB. My only handle is actually this resistor, which is matching this. Now if I mismatch this, or if I go 22 like it was on originally, even this construct is not going to look great. You see, so even without having all those um, bias with the extra inductance, uh, it it will be overshoot and undershoot if um, if it's not matched. So the series resistor is always good to be there. It has to be very very close to the driver. So don't put this resistor somewhere in the middle of the track. No, 
close very very close to the pin immediately after the driver match it sorry that was supposed to be a 50 <clears throat> match it and yeah looks good me likey okay this concludes my video so um this is how i fixed the problem by matching the this resistor and i made this uh, board to pass the emissions it was failing uh, on on higher harmonics on the i think on the third and on the fifth harmonic of the clock so 370 something megahertz okay uh thanks for watching and i shall see you on the next video